Good morning. Uh, the Lord be with you this reminiscere Sunday, or the second Sunday of Lent. Uh, the order of service is divine service setting three. Can you guys hear? Is that working? All right. It is there. Okay. Uh, the, the bells were on this morning, not very loudly, but they were there, so we thank God for that. Uh, just a note for this Lenten season, the Glory and Excelsius, as well as the Alleluia verses, are omitted until we come to the resurrection of our Lord on Easter morning. Uh, we begin uh, with our opening hymn, 571, uh, God loved the world so that he gave. really loud. All right. 
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Beloved in the Lord, let us draw near with a true heart and confess our sins unto God our Father, beseeching him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to grant us forgiveness. Our help is in the name of the Lord. Who made heaven and earth. I said I will confess my transgressions unto the Lord. And you forgave the iniquity of my sins. O oh, Almighty God, merciful Father, I, a poor, miserable sinner, confess unto you all my sins and iniquities, with which I have ever offended you, and justly deserve your temporal and eternal punishment. But I am heartily sorry for them, and sincerely repent of them. And I pray you of your boundless mercy, and for the sake of the holy, innocent, bitter sufferings and death of your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, to be gracious and merciful to me, a poor sinful being. Upon this, your confession, I, by virtue of my office as a called and ordained servant of the word, announce the grace of God unto all of you. And in this stead, and by the command of my Lord Jesus Christ, I forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Remember your mercy, O Lord, and your steadfast love, for they have been from of old. Let not my enemies exalt over me. Redeem Israel, O God, out of all his troubles. To you, O Lord, I lift up my soul. O my God, in you I trust. Let me not be put to shame. Remember not the sins of my youth or my transgressions. According to your steadfast love, remember me for the sake of your goodness, O Lord. Good and upright is the Lord. Therefore he instructs sinners in the way. For your name's sake, O Lord, pardon my guilt, for it is great. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the Remember your mercy, O Lord, and your steadfast love, for they have been from of old. Let not my enemies exalt over me. Redeem Israel, O God, out of all his troubles. see that of ourselves we have no strength. By your mighty power, defend us from all adversity that may happen to the body, and from all evil thoughts that may assault and hurt the soul. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, 
one God now and forever. That's the worst. All right. Audibles. <laughs> so, all right. The Old Testament for Reminiscere is written in the first book of, Mo of Moses, commonly called Genesis, the 32nd chapter. The same night he arose and took his two wives, his two female servants, and his 11 children, and crossed the ford of the Jabbok. And he took them and sent them across the stream and everything else he had. And Jacob was left alone. And a man wrestled with him until the breaking of the day, when the man saw that he did not prevail against Jacob. He touched his hip socket, and Jacob's hip was put out of joint as he wrestled with him. Then he said, Let me go, for the day has broken. But Jacob said, I will not let you go unless you bless me. And he said to him, What is your name? And he said, Jacob. Then he said, Your name shall no longer be called Jacob, but Israel. For you have striven with God and with men and have prevailed. Then Jacob asked him, Please let, uh, tell me your name. But he said, Why is it that you ask my name? And there he blessed him. So Jacob called the name of the place ben Peniel, saying, For I have seen God face to face, and yet my life has been delivered. The sun rose up upon him as he passed Penuel, limping because of his hip. Therefore to this day the people of Israel do not eat the sinew of the hip that is on the hip socket, because he touched the socket of Jacob's hip on the sinew of the thigh. This is the, the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Oh, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. For his steadfast love endures forever. Who can utter the mighty deeds of the Lord or declare all his praise? Blessed are they who observe justice, who do righteousness at all times. Remember me, O Lord, when you show favor to your people. Help me when you save them. The epistle is written in St. Paul's first letter to the church in Thessalonica, the fourth chapter. Finally then, brothers, we ask and urge you in the Lord Jesus that as you receive from us how you ought to live and to please God, just as you are doing, that you do so more and more. For you, know that, for you know what instructions we gave you through the Lord Jesus. For this is the will of God, your sanctification, that you abstain from sexual immorality, that each one of you know how to control his own body in holiness and honor not in the passion of lust like the Gentiles who do not know God, that no one transgress and wrong his brother in this matter, because the Lord is an avenger in all these things, as we told you beforehand and solemnly warned you. For God has not called us for impurity, but in holiness. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. We stand. The Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the 15th chapter. Glory 
Jesus went away from there and withdrew to the district of Tyre and Sidon. And behold, a Canaanite woman from that region came out and was crying, Have mercy on me, O Lord, son of David. My daughter is severely oppressed by a demon. But he did not answer her a word. And his disciples came and begged him, saying, Send her away, for she is crying out after us. He answered, I was sent only to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. But she came and knelt before him, saying, Lord, help me. And he answered, It is not right to take the children's bread and throw it to the dogs. She said, Yes, Lord. Even the, yet even the dogs eat the crumbs that fall from their master's table. Then Jesus answered her, O woman, great is your faith. Be it done for you as you desire. And her daughter was healed instantly. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise be to thee, O Christ. We confess our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord of Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten and not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven, and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary, and was made man and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried. And the third day he rose again, according to the scriptures, and ascended into heaven, and sits at the right hand of the Father. And he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead, whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come.
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Remember not the sins of my youth or my transgressions. According to your steadfast love, remember me for the sake of your goodness, O Lord. There Jacob was. He was at the fort of Jabbok, but he was not there to enjoy the scenery with his family. In fact, he was far from at peace. Fear, even terror, assaulted his soul, his conscience. The sins of his youth were about to come crashing upon him. He was about to confront his twin brother Esau. Jacob and Esau's relationship, since their conception in Rebekah's womb, had been nothing but a fight, a war. Esau was the first one out, but not without his nemesis grabbing hold of his heel on the way out. One can only imagine how those nine months were for Rebecca. Yet at, her birth, at their birth, God prophesied to Rebecca, promising this would be the case, constant unending war between brothers. Esau was a bear of a man, hairy all around. As the oldest and, prof as the oldest and proficient in manly things, he was his father, Isaac's favorite. Yes, parents have favorites. This has always been the case in this fallen world. But that does not, however, mean that it is right or excusable. As one sees throughout scripture, such favoritism breeds great animosity and resentment. And sadly, Jacob, on the short end of things in his youth, would be guilty of the same in his old age. Remember Joseph. Jacob was nothing like his brother. He was a mama's boy, even to old age. He was by no means a man's man. Instead of brute force, he would use his tongue to do his dirtiest fighting. With his words, he would provoke his brother Esau, who, though gifted in physical pursuits, was a bit dull in common sense. He was easily played. Jacob would, like, would lie and deceive to no end. He would even go so far as to steal the birthright from his brother for a bowl of stew, and even that twice. Once directly from Esau, and then indirectly deceiving their father. This late, latter deception was the final accent to his animosity toward his brother. In cahoots with his mother, Jacob deceived his blind old man by dressing up like, a, like his brother. He put on goat skins and then cooked Isaac his favorite supper, which he had expected from Esau, who he had sent out to hunt for him. Now, one would think that these are the antics of, an, of a conniving teenager, but they are not. Jacob is 77 years old when he does this evil deed. Who here is 77? Would you ever do this? Would you? No one on earth would, regardless of age, ever lie, cheat, or outright steal an, an inheritance, right? Well, I'm not saying any of you have done this, but you, we all know what Jacob did is nothing new under the sun and it matters not how old you are. And because of it, because of this dirty deed, Jacob is forced to leave. Esau wanted to kill him for it. He stole the birthright, and with it, the promise, and half the inheritance, more than that, even. Jacob's mother then convinces Isaac to send him away to send Jacob away to finally, at the age of 77, to get a wife, which will be, as we will see, God's great discipline and call to repentance. For his uncle Laban was just as deceptive as he was. Now fast forward 20 years, Jacob is now 97. 
And then he goes all WWE with a stranger by the river. There is no, this is no mere metaphor, dream, or delusion. No, he is actually wrestling a real man. The wrestling is real at the age of 97. The man is there to confront Jacob, and as we will hear, ultimately to bless him. Hold on to this man in your mind. We will return to him in a bit. The Canaanite woman, by her heritage, did not deserve to approach Jesus. It wasn't because she was the wrong color skin, or a woman for that matter, or even from the wrong neighborhood. No, she didn't deserve to approach Jesus because as a Canaanite, she was an enemy of God and his people. Over the centuries, the Canaanites killed countless children of God, and they worshiped false gods. And by that, they would also then lead many of God's children into unbelief adding to the body count. For this Canaanite, for this, Canaanites were determined by God to be out. They're not part of the family. They're not part of the blessing. Their unbelief and hardness of heart toward him, his word, and his people set themselves into the camp of Pharaoh, Nebuchadnezzar, and Herod the Great. Silence from Jesus was nothing but actual kindness. The disciples could not restrain themselves, however. They had to add insults. Have you ever wondered why this woman's daughter was demon-possessed? You see, demon possession doesn't just happen. If you are a child of God, if you are baptized, you cannot be possessed. You can be harassed by demons, certainly, but possession is impossible. For in holy baptism, you are made a temple of the Holy Spirit. And therefore, there is no room in the inn, so to speak. For the people of God, they had circumcision in God's word, a precursor to this washing of new birth and renewal of the Holy Spirit. This woman and her daughter, well, being Canaanites, they didn't have this blessing. By their heritage, they have rejected it. When one is not in the word, receiving the gifts of God, being fortified by the Holy Spirit who delivers the forgiveness of sins for Jesus' sake, one becomes a sitting duck. And if you are surrounded by nothing but false gods and false worship, it is only a matter of time before something other than the Holy Spirit moves in. The Canaanite woman had made some very bad choices. Unfortunately, she was born into this ignorance. Now, I know that this is an offensive word to many, but we need to consider it and to do so often. The truth of the matter is that we don't know what we don't know when we don't know it. How the devil, now the devil in league with our sinful flesh that thinks far too highly of himself, leads us sinners to take offense when our ignorance is brought before our face. We are offended because we have the illusion of our divine, of our divinity shattered, and that so, so very severely, and we cannot stand it. Our pride lashes out, and yet we must learn. We must learn that we are not close to being like God. We don't know everything, and that we do not and we do not know everything, and what we do know doesn't amount to anything but a pile of dust in the end. So the Canaanite woman was quite ignorant. So back to her. Yes, she was ignorant, but not entirely. Not anymore, at least. Something had enlightened her, changed her. Dear saints, you see, she heard the gospel of Jesus Christ. She was called, enlightened, sanctified, and clearly kept in the true faith. Her ignorance was no more. She was now animated to, bold, to boldness and confidence, one 
that is beyond natural. She cries out to Jesus, Have mercy on me, O Lord, son of David. My daughter is severely oppressed by a demon. This woman comes at Jesus with nothing to lose. Don't give me what I deserve, she cries out. You are the Lord. You are David's son. Please, not for me, but for my daughter. Heal her. The silence from Jesus, followed by the disdain of the disciples, is not a surprise to her. Yet it does not affect her. She is fully aware of who she is and what she has done. She even receives Jesus' proclamation, I was only sent to the lost sheep of the house of Israel, and she takes it in stride. She lunges at Jesus, actually, and in full-on worship, she lands at his feet. Lord, help me. She grabs hold of her Lord by the heel and would not let go. It is not right to take the children's bread and throw it to the dogs. Jesus' counter move was nothing less than this exclamation. Let go, for the day has broken. It's time to move on. I got things to do. But she says, she pins him there, right there to the ground, with her response. Yes, Lord, yet even the dogs eat the crumbs that fall from their master's table. With these words, Jesus has won. Yes, Jesus wins. Oh, great is your faith. Be it done as you have desired. For Jesus blesses her in that moment, just what she desired just what she called Jesus to remember, holding him accountable to the very gospel that she had heard and grabbed hold of. If you haven't noticed by now, Jacob and the Canaanite woman wrestled the same man. They, with supernatural tenacity, grapple with God and are blessed by their encounter. But as I said, Jesus is the one who won. He won because he was able to do exactly what he wanted, wants to do. For he wants to bless, not to curse. He longs to be received as these two saints received him. Their God-given faith dared to grapple with Jesus, to hold him to the good news of his word. Jacob, in his torment, needed Jesus and the promise of his coming to strengthen him and to bring peace. Esau and the regrets, the sins of his youth and his many transgressions could not touch him because he was now in Christ. He grabbed hold of the promise that he had received from his own father, even if he had stolen it to begin with. It is that promise, God's promise, that was sufficient in repentance, in repentant faith, he considers it all loss. Anything that would have been for his good, he considers it rubbish. He considers it rubbish compared to the promised inheritance he had in Jesus, who was to come. For the Canaanite woman, the encounter is the same. The good news of Jesus now being among men to redeem this sinful world was the power of God unto her salvation. The word she heard with the Spirit's work, her faith was found great. The word and the Spirit make her faith great because her faith wrestles with Jesus, grabs hold of him. He is the greatness of her faith. You too, like Jacob and this woman, have nothing to fear, nothing for which to be ashamed. You didn't know what you didn't know when you didn't know it. And even if you did know it and still did it, now you are reminded that nothing, 
Not even demon possession excludes you from a good fight with Jesus. In fact, he welcomes it. He welcomes you to grab hold of him for your good. So tackle him with his word and promises. He dares you to do it. Hear his word and believe it. His word is truth. For in the end, you will walk away, yes, limping. You will know that you have met Jesus face to face. Your sins, no matter how big and bad as they are, are for forgiven in the encounter. You are blessed in the end. You are not dead by this encounter, but made alive. You now know who you are. You're not in charge. You're not Jesus. You don't know everything. You can't do anything except in him. Now Jesus may have touched your hip, reminding you of your utter weakness and total dependence upon you, whatever way that might look in your life. But it is Jesus in that encounter who is eternally wounded for you. He does not go unaffected. Whatever it is that you bring to the fight, he bears it up, takes it unto himself. He bears the bruises, the stripes, the nails. And he refuses to let go of it for your sake. He, the ultimate strongman, shoulders all sin and pins it to the cross on your behalf all the way to the dust of death. He pile drives it to the tomb. It is finished. He is the greatest blessing. This, what he has done, is the source of all real blessings in your life. And that is yours. And your faith instructed by God's holy word, seeks to grab hold of it. And now you know. Now you know where your good is, and you dare not let go. It is not in your own strength, but in Jesus. Hearing who he is for you and what he has done for you, dare to grab hold of him and not let go. Come to him by the streams of your baptism and demand he bless you with his forgiveness because he has promised to do just that. Come to his table as dogs begging for crumbs and be fed with heavenly food, manna that is Jesus' body and blood. Come, lay hold of Jesus and become a child of God, a wrestler of God, an Israelite child of Jacob, the very one who wrestles with God, and be a sheep of his tribe, the tribe of Israel. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. We stand for prayer. Now the peace of God that passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. amen.
We rise for prayer. In our prayers this morning, we remember Kenneth Kaiser, who is at St. Luke's in the ICU following some complications to his chemotherapy. He was recently diagnosed with T-cell lymphoma and is undergoing treatment there. We keep him in our prayers this morning. We also keep in our prayers David Rathke, Renee Knuth's brother, who is undergoing medical tests as well. Let us pray. Lord God, you sent your son first to the lost sheep of the house of Israel before spreading the cover of your wings over all nations. Move to jealousy those of your ancient people who refuse to witness, who refuse the witness of the Messiah and lead them by your spirit to receive him in faith. Lord, in your mercy. Lord God, you have knit Jew and Gentile and all the nations of the world into one, your one holy Catholic and apostolic church. Lead us ever more deeply into the unity you desire for your people, that we may bear one another's burdens in prayer and in works of mercy. Lord, in your mercy. Lord God, your people of old honored the affliction, or the affliction of Jacob by abstaining from the sinew of the thigh. Help us to honor our fathers in the faith who have suffered for the sake of your precious gospel and set our hearts to follow their faithful and bold example. Lord, in your mercy. Lord God, your servant Jacob sent his family ahead that he might wrestle with you in prayer. Strengthen the hearts of fathers in our church that they likewise would provide for their families and strive with you in prayer until they receive your blessing. Lord, in your mercy. Lord God, you watch over the ways of your people and call us to please you. Lead us to control our bodies and to flee all immorality that we might show a godly witness in this world and adorn your gospel with a holy life. Lord, in your mercy. Lord God, help us earnest, uh, earnestly to seek your blessing, though it, come, though it comes together with affliction. Give us eyes to see through these trials, which comes from your hands to the endurance and character, uh, to, to the endurance, character and hope they produce in your children. Lord, in your mercy. Lord God, you hear the cries of the se severely oppressed and bless them with healing in your appointed season. Comfort those who, await on, who wait on you, especially Kenneth Kaiser, Detlef Piet Asmussen, Ellison Butch Riemert, and David Rathke, and all those we now name in our hearts. Increase their faith and bring them through their trials, Lord, in your mercy. Lord God, though it is not right to give the children's bread to the dogs and to cast pearls before swine, even the dogs eat the crumbs that fall from their master's table. Receive us in your mercy and enable all who commune to, take the good con to make the good, good confession, both of our sins and of you, our only Savior, that we may receive your true body and blood and be forgiven. Lord, in your mercy. All these things and whatever else you know that we need, grant us, Father, for the sake of him who died and rose again and now lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up unto the Lord. Let us give thanks unto the Lord our God. It is meet and right so to do. It is truly good, right, and sound, you tarry, that we should at all times and in all places. Give thanks to you, 
Holy Lord, Almighty Father, everlasting God, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who overcame the assaults of the devil and gave his life as a ransom for many, that with cleansed hearts we might be prepared joyfully to celebrate the Paschal Feast in sincerity and truth. Therefore, with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and saying, Blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night when he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to the disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. In the same way also, he took the cup after supper, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Oh, Christ the
through the body and blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, strengthen and preserve you in the one true faith, but this life and the life to come. Be bound in God's peace. Your sins are forgiven. Behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Now the true body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen and preserve you in the one true faith, for at this life and the life to come. Be part in God's peace, your sins are forgiven. Behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Amen. true body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, strengthen and preserve you in the one true faith, from this life to the life to come. Be part to God's peace. Your sins are forgiven.
blood of Christ shed for you. The blood of Christ shed for you. The blood of Christ shed for you. Now the true body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen and preserve you in the one true faith throughout this life and a life to come. Depart in God's peace. Your sins are forgiven. true body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, to strengthen and preserve you with the one true faith, but this life and a life to come. We bow to God's peace. Your sins are forgiven.
to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for He is good. Let us pray. We give thanks to you, Almighty God, that you have refreshed us through this salutary gift. And we implore you that of your mercy you would strengthen us through the same, in faith toward you and in fervent love toward one another. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God now and forever. The Lord be with you. Bless we the Lord. The Lord bless thee and keep thee. The Lord make his face to shine upon thee and to be gracious unto thee. The Lord lift up his countenance upon thee and give thee peace.
You may be seated. Hey, Tim, I need this on. Hey, Tim, can I turn this one on? It's on. I didn't turn it off. There we are. All right. Well, that was fun. All right. Well, we'll get it, we'll get it hammered out. Uh, we had the bells, at least. So we got that, we got that going for us. Uh, Lord's blessings to you again this reminiscere Sunday. A um, couple announcements. Uh, this is the last Sunday to order flowers, right? Or yes? Yes, last Sunday to order flowers. Uh, it's not just for Easter lilies. I think there's, what, tulips, hyacinths, and things like that, right? So please, um, a variety of things. So out here uh, on the table in the narthex uh, is the sign-up sheet, so please... Uh, take a look at that before you depart today. Um, all things are, are looking good for at least most of the week. Friday doesn't look so great, but uh, we'd, I'm not here on Friday. So uh, we uh, will continue with our Bible studies as, as scheduled, uh, including Wednesday, 1 o'clock and 7 o'clock, same service, um, same sermon. And uh, at 6 o'clock, we will have chili. Uh, offered uh, by the men's club again. Uh, five guys chili, so it'll be five guys making different chilies, throwing it in one pot. So uh, it, it, it turned out well last time, so I, I was very happy with that. So uh, I thought that was a good idea. And then uh, next, the following Wednesday, uh, the LWML will be offering up their their delicacies. So um, are there? Uh, we also uh, remember, uh, Deb, is, uh, we need uh, uh, some volunteers to make soup. Uh, for March and April, yeah. uh, soup for Solomon. Uh, it's just friends for Solomon, not just the LWML. So if you are interested in offering up that, uh, talk to Deb, and she will get you the right instructions. So. Yes, goes to seminary education, so we, we thank that. Um, he's on Vicarage right now, but uh, it, as it is with Vicarage, the stipend is not that great. Uh, they do get their insurance covered by the congregation they serve, but, um, but when he gets back fourth year, he will have bills to pay just as he, uh, as he did beforehand. So, uh, and every little bit helps, especially since he is uh, from Madagascar and uh, his resources are limited uh, for this country. So. Uh, are there any other announcements? Seeing none, may God keep you safe in the palm of his hands until we meet again. God bless. <laughs>